Welcome, friends, to Boiler Room Detective Channel, where I share my knowledge and experience troubleshooting boiler issues. If you find these videos helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Today, we're investigating why the brew kettle wasn't heating. In this case, the owner said his brew kettle wasn't getting warm enough. During the brewing process, a rolling boil is essential. The rolling boil sterilizes the wort, lowers the pH, and stops the enzyme activity. There is no beer without a rolling boil. The brewer was unable to get the rolling boil. He told me that when he opened the valves to the kettle, the steam pressure dropped and it took a long time to rise. They said they heard water sloshing in the vessel and water hammer. The condensate outlet for all three steam heaters in the jacket were piped together and fed a single float and thermostatic trap. Upon investigation, I first considered the size of the kettle. If it was oversized, it could lead to these symptoms. However, the kettle was appropriately sized for the size of the brewery. So what was causing the issue? As with many steam system problems, it wasn't just a single factor, but a combination of several. The steam pipes feeding the kettle were vertical pipes reaching up 20 feet or so. The steam in the vertical pipes would condense and fill the pipes with condensate when the manual valve was closed. When the valve opened, it would allow all that condensate stacked in the pipe into the steam flow, causing banging, premature condensing of the steam, and dropping of the steam pressure. The second item I checked was the steam pressure control. It was set to operate between 11 and 14 PSI. The control worked perfectly. A way to test the pressure control is to shut off the steam valve on the outlet of the boiler and let the pressure build up. When the control shuts the boiler off, you can slowly open the valve and see at what pressure the burner restarts. Another significant issue was the three steam jackets in the brew kettle fed a common pipe and steam trap. This is a problematic setup. Each steam coil or jacket requires its own steam trap. By combining the three heaters, it allowed 12 PSI steam pressure on both sides of the system. Steam systems only work when there is a pressure differential. To overcome the steam pressure, the condensate would stack in the vertical pipe. This could cause the system to add more water, perpetuating the issue. It would take a column of water 27 and a half feet high to overcome the steam pressure of 12 PSI. One pound will raise water 2.3 feet. When the condensate finally returns at a boiler feed tank, it would overflow because of the excess makeup water. This was water the owner paid to heat and chemically treat. This would increase the chemical treatment costs and introduce oxygen into the system, which would attack the metal surfaces, shortening the boiler and piping life. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com is focused on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. It includes a monthly blog about steam issues inside a brewery. My other site is fireiceheat.com. It's my company's website and shows some of our capabilities. I have authored 12 boiler books, which are available on Amazon. My technical articles are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I'll see you on the next case.